A reading from the first book of Samuel. Saul took 3,000 men chosen from the whole of Israel and went in search of David and his men east of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds along the route where there was a cave and went in to cover his feet. Now David and his men were sitting in the recesses of the cave. David's men said to him, Today is the day the Lord said to you, I will deliver your enemy into your power. Do what you like with him. David stood up and, unobserved, cut off the border of Saul's cloak. Afterwards, David reproached himself for having cut off the border of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord preserve me from doing such a thing to any Lord and raising my hand against him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. David gave his men strict instructions, forbidding them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. After this, David too left the cave and called after Saul, my Lord King. Saul looked behind him and David bowed to the ground and did homage. Then David said to Saul, why do you listen to the men who say to you, David means to harm you? Why, your own eyes have seen today how the Lord put you in my power in the cave and how I refused to kill you, but spared you. I will not raise my hand against my Lord, I said, for he is the anointed of the Lord. O oh, my father, see, look at the border of your cloak in my hand. Since I cut off the border of your cloak, yet did not kill you, you must acknowledge, frankly, that there is neither malice nor treason in my mind. I have not offended against you, yet you hunt me down to take my life. May the Lord be judge between me and you, and may the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be laid on you. As the old proverb says, wickedness goes out from the wicked, and my hand will not be laid on you. On whose trail has the king of Israel set out? On whose trail are you in hot pursuit? On the trail of a dead dog? On the trail of a single flea? May the Lord be the judge and decide between me and you. May he take up my cause and defend it and give judgment for me, freeing me from your power. When David had finished saying these words to Saul, Saul said, Is that your voice, my son David? And Saul wept aloud. You are a more upright man than I, he said to David, for you have repaid me with good, while I have repaid you with evil. Today you have crowned your goodness towards me, since the Lord had put me in your power, yet you did not kill me. When a man comes on his enemy, does he let him go unmolested? May the Lord reward you for your goodness you have done to show me today. Now I will know you will indeed reign, that the sovereignty in Israel will be secure in your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy on, me, on me, God, God. have mercy. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. For in you my soul has taken refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. Have mercy, mercy on, on me, me, God, have mercy. I call to the God most high, to God who has always been my help, 
May he send from heaven and save me, and shame those who assail me. Have May God mercy send on me, his God, truth have and mercy. his love. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. O God, rise above the heavens. May your glory shine on earth, for your love reaches to the heavens and your truth to the skies. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy. Let us stand Please to greet the God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Through the good news, God called us to share the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went up into the hills and summoned those he wanted. So they came to him and he appointed twelve. They were to be his companions and to be sent out to preach with power to cast out devils. And so he appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bonagers, or Sons of Thunder. Then Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, the man who was to betray him. The Gospel of the Lord. I find the story about David's restraint and good nature towards Saul and Saul's reaction to it very moving. Saul's hatred and jealousy of David over his popularity with his people in the kingdom was so bad that he'd led him out to, to engage him in a desperate and deadly pursuit of him. He took 3,000 men with him. The futility and stupidity of such obsession is expressed eloquently by David, who questions Saul. After whom has the king of Israel come out? After a dead dog? After a flea? David is a towering figure in the Old Testament who despite his failings was clearly a man who strove to live in obedience with God. He had the opportunity to kill Saul by decapitating him as he slept but refused to because he knew him to be the Lord's anointed. He'd taken the border of his cloak, if you remember just to prove that he had been there when he was asleep. And despite Saul's behavior and sin, David recognized that he had a profound dignity and was precious in the eyes of God. He could not and would not harm him. David's response to Saul reflects the teachings of the New Testament. He went beyond the teaching of the Torah, with which he would have been very familiar, and loved his enemy and prayed for the one who persecuted him. He did not repay evil for evil and did not seek to take revenge, which he understood was best left to God. David's witness was so compelling and powerful that it cut Saul to the heart. And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good whereas I have repaid you evil. Most of us, at some time or another, have enemies. If we define an enemy as someone who dislikes us, or finds us difficult, or simply a person we find it hard to get on with. Sadly, this is life. And Christians are as prone to giving into envy, hatred, jealousy and rage as the next man or woman. David overcame his enemy by living in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
This is the way we too can overcome. David would do no harm to his tormentor because he saw him as the anointed of the Lord. David refused to take advantage over the man who was seeking to kill him. Agatha refused to deny her Lord even under unspeakable torture. Such is saintliness. We too understand that every human being, no matter who they are or what they think of us, are made in the image and likeness of God. May God grant us to be able to see him in all other people that we meet.